this lesson is a factoring review of all the types of factoring we've learned so far. We're starting with factoring out a common factor because we remember that's the first step in any factoring problem to look and see if the two things have any factors in common. Do 6x cubed and 9x have any factors in common? Yes, they have a 3x in common. So we factor out the 3x and we divide both of those pieces by 3x. 6x cubed divided by 3x is 2x squared and 9x divided by 3x is 3. On the next one, we have 4x squared plus 2x. They have a 2x in common, so we factor that out, and we're left with 2x plus, and here you want to be careful, 2x divided by 2x is going to be a positive 1. You don't want to leave that out. The next type of factoring we're doing is a difference of perfect squares. The difference means it's got to be a subtraction problem, and a and b both need, a squared and b squared both need to be perfect squares. So when we look at x squared minus 16, we see x squared is a perfect square and 16 is a perfect square. Remember the pattern for these is going to be x, sorry, a plus b times a minus b. So if we have x squared minus 16, we're going to say x and x, and what multiplies to give me negative 16, positive 4, and negative 4. On the next one, we have 4x squared minus 9. When a is something other than 1, you want to look and see if it factors out. Since 4 doesn't divide evenly into 9, that's not going to work. So we say, what's the square root of 4x squared? It's 2x. And the square root of 9 is 3, so we're going to have a plus 3 and a minus 3. We move from there into factoring trinomials. And we start out factoring trinomials when a is 1. When a is 1, we start out with c and looking for factors of c. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. We know that in order to give us positive 12, they need to have the same signs. And in order to add to give us negative 7, they must both need to be negatives. So it's either going to be negative 1 and negative 12, negative 2 and negative 6, or negative 3 and negative 4. Well, of those, the only ones that add to give me negative 7 are negative 3 and negative 4. So we're going to say x minus 3 and x minus 4. The next one, we have x squared plus 5x minus 24. Now we have a negative back here. So in order to multiply and get a negative, we know we need a positive and a negative. So we know immediately that our signs are going to be one positive and one negative. Now we need our numbers that multiply to give us negative 24 to add to give us 5. So let's say we could have 1 and negative 24, negative 1 and positive 24. And I'm just going to go ahead and list each set with a positive and a negative either both directions. And I'm looking for the ones that add to give me a positive 5. That's going to be this one right here. So I need to be 3 to be negative and 8 to be positive. Then we started factoring trinomials when that leading coefficient a was not 1, but there was a common factor. Remember we said that's the first step of all factoring. What do 2x squared, 4x, and negative 6 have in common? They all have a 2. So we factor out the 2 first. Remember, that's a division. So we're dividing 2 out of each piece. And then we try to factor our, by our trinomial that's left. To multiply and give you negative 3 is either going to be 1 and negative 3 or negative 1 and positive 3. Since they must add to give you 2, we want that second set right there. So x minus 1 and x plus 3. Just as a reminder, it doesn't matter what order those binomials go in. I could say 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. Either one of those is acceptable. On the next one, we're still looking for a common factor. And we notice, first of all, that they're all even, and they all have an x in them. Now, for this, we also have a negative for a. 
If a is a negative, we'd like to factor that out. That's going to make any factoring we do later easier. So we're going to factor out for this one a negative 2 and an x. So we're going to divide everything by negative 2x. So we have positive x squared, positive 2x, and negative 8. Now I check to see if my trinomial factors are the listing factors of negative 8. And I want the pair that adds to give me positive 2. So we have that one right there. So we're going to have negative 2x. That stays part of your answer. x minus 2, x plus 4. This next one is our one that involves the most steps. This is when a is not 1, but also that a, which for us is 6, is not a common factor for everything, so it doesn't factor out. This is when we use that rooftop method. So we're going to multiply, I'm going to rewrite this, so I have a little more space, 6x squared plus 7x minus 20. We multiply a times c, 6 times negative 20 is negative 120. Then I want to find the factors of negative 120 that give me, a, that have a sum of 7. If this is a number you're not familiar with all the factors, remember you can go into your calculator and type into y equals 120 divided by x and then go to the table and find a list of all the functions, all the factors. I did that here and I'm looking at all of the factors 1 and 120, 2 and 60, 3 and 40. And I'm looking for ones that have a difference of 7. So I'm going to need to scroll down until I find, oh look, 8 and 15 have a difference of 7. Since I want it to be a positive 7, but it needs to give me negative 120, that's going to be a negative 8 and a positive 15. Remember I said if possible, if there's one negative and one positive, put that negative one first. The next step is to split the middle term. So we write 6x squared, and instead of writing 7x, we write minus 8x plus 15x, minus, and then bring down your minus 20. Then we can group our first terms and our last terms, and we look for a common factor. 6x squared and 8x have a 2x in common, leaving you with 3 mi 3x minus 4, plus 15x and 20 have a 5 in common, leaving us with 3x minus 4. That's what we wanted to see. Those two binomials are identical, so we can factor out the binomial. Oops. 3x minus 4 times what's left, 2x plus 5. There you go. The very last one I put on here is one where you have more than one variable. You have an x squared and a y squared. The difference with these is you're not just going to have an x in front. In order to get that y squared for your last term, you're going to have a y in back. Everything else is the same. We want factors that multiply to give us positive 8 and add to give us positive 6. So that's going to be a positive 2 and a positive 4. And that's it. There's your review.